Hi everybody, I'm Florian, one of the developers of ECFINO, and today I will give you a code walkthrough on our GitHub repository. In order not to confuse you with some um, developer environment or something, I will do the code um, walkthrough directly here in our GitHub repository. So in our GitHub repository, you can find for sure all the information on our code. But besides that, we also integrated an API documentation based on our code on our read the docs documentation. So that is automatically generated using our code and you can find all the information on our whole API on everything which is integrated in EasyFino by looking at that API documentation. And here you can also find links to the source files. But now let's jump back to our GitHub repository. So under EasyFino, you can find that we have multiple different sub packages integrated in EasyFino. On the top level, you can find our run script, which you might already know from our previous tutorials. This run script calls the Optim pipeline, which is basically the function that is called by the script and which could also be used in our pip workflow. Furthermore, we have these seven sub packages and we will now go through all of them. So utils is pretty straightforward. Here we integrated some check functions. So for example, to check if some repository, if some directories exist in the first place, some print functions like the config information and so on and so forth. So nothing special about this package. In our simulate package, we integrated all the functions, scripts and so on to create the synthetic data and also to analyze the results in the end. We provide a separate tutorial on how to create synthetic phenotypes in EasyPhino and we integrated information of analyzing the results in our results analysis tutorial. So please have a look at these tutorials if you are interested in simulating phenotypes. But now let's jump in directly into the machine learning process. So the first thing which is used in EasyPhino is our preprocess package. In our preprocess package, we have, for example, several raw data functions which prepare our data files, which call the encoding and which check the basic files which are provided by the user. So all that stuff that you don't want to do over and over again and which is unified here. For example, also the data splits. A very important part of this sub package is our base data set. In our base data set, we load our whole data we apply the math filters, we filter the duplicate SNPs, and we also check our data splits. So here we have all the functionalities we need to use in order to load our data. And it might also be necessary that you want to change this for some specific reasons in case of your data. If you stick to our data guide, to the format we define in our data guide, you do not need to change anything here. But for some reasons, you may want to change something, then feel free to do here. Here is the place to change the data set, which is then used later on in EasyFino. So that's basically all about our pre-process um, package. Here we prepare the whole data, we do the data splits, we save the data and so on and so forth. So now our data is pre-processed. The next step we are doing is running our optimization. So for our optimization, we have two different ways. One is the parameter free fitting in case you have an algorithm which does not have hyperparameters. 
So for example, loop in the implementation we are using does not possess hyperparameters. That's why we just need to fit it to our data and we do not need to optimize hyperparameters. One of the big advantages of EasyPhenom is the automated hyperparameter search using Bayesian optimization. So we are really using state-of-the-art machine learning and we really make it easily accessible for all people who might not be machine learning experts. And that's all done here in our Optuna Optim class. Here in our Optuna Optim class, we define our whole study, we create new studies, and so on and so forth. We have here our objective function, which is something like the main part of this Optuna stuff. So here the whole model is created. The model is then used to predict on the validation sets. And in the end, we are always reporting some current validation result. So some objective criterion we can use for our Bayesian optimization. Then we have some helper functions, some write functions. And if you scroll to the very end of this function, you can see our run Optuna optimization, which is called by our run script. So this is very important if you want to get to more and more, more about the automated hyperparameter search that we are using in our EasyPhino framework. That's all here in our optimization Optuna Optim file. We're also saving all the results and in the end we are returning some summary dictionaries. So that's a very important part our optimization package. But the whole optimization is nothing without the models. And that's a further very important feature of EasyPhino. So EasyPhino is really easy extendable. And I will show you this in our class overview. As you can see here, Everything we are doing is based on a base model or on a param-free base model. Yeah, here we have again the same um, distinction. Base model contains models which have hyperparameters and param-free base model is just models which are fitted, for example, blue. But now let's concentrate on the left part here. So in base model, we have some functions which every model has to possess and we also define functions that every model has to implement. And now there are some very common machine learning frameworks like scikit-learn, PyTorch or TensorFlow. And for all of these three um, machine learning frameworks, we also created parent models we can use afterwards. So for example, our sklearn model here already implements some methods which are defined here in base model. Yeah, so we define here methods which are needed for all sklearn models. And in torch model, we define methods which are needed for all torch models. And the same applies for TensorFlow model. So for example, loading the data, creating the batches, um, running the training in epochs and so on, that's everything here in Torch model. So you do not need to program it over and over again. And at the very end, we have the actual prediction models like the SVM or XGBoost. And that has the big advantage that in the end, we only need to set two attributes and to define two methods in order to create a new model, which is really easily extendable. And now let's have a look at our code. So here in base model, we basically define everything which needs to be implemented by every um, prediction model. So we need to define the standard encoding, all the possible encodings, and we also define some parameters which every prediction model contains. 
Every prediction model needs to have a defined model and a defined hyperparams to tune method. And here we can also find information on the structure of this hyperparameter definition. So basically it's a dictionary and here you can find all the different options which we have. Everything needs to have a retrain and a predict function, which is usually done in the sklearn tor tensorflow model, as well as the train while loop. And then we here define also functions which are common for every model. That's the suggest hyperparameter of tuner. So here we basically read the dictionary that you define and we suggest the hyperparams to a tuner. There is also a function that just suggests all hyperparameters and there is a safe model function. So that's our base model. And now for this code walkthrough, let's make an example using our sklearn model. So here in the sklearn model, we see that it is based on the base model, but also defines some functions which need to be um, defined by our um, actual prediction models. So the first thing, we implement the retrain function here. That's fairly simple in sklearn. Furthermore, we define the predict and the train while loop, which is everything pretty straightforward in sklearn. If we have a look now at our torch model, we can see that it really makes sense to define this one because the train while loop here looks very different um, and we have way more functions here which we do not want to implement over and over again. But now let's go back to the sklearn example. Because for example, if we now look into our random forest, we can see that our random forest model is based on our sklearn model. It defines our two attributes, standard and possible encodings. And it defines the methods define model and define hyperparms to tune. So we are just suggesting all hyperparms here and we are creating our random forest classifier or regressor depending on the task which we get from our parent base class. And in the end we have here our defined hyperparms to tune method. Here we just return a dictionary which always gives the name of the hyperparameter, the data type, and then depending on the data type it could be a list of values it could be a lower and an upper bound as well as a step size. But everything regarding that thing can be found in our documentation and in our base model class. And that's it. So it's really very simple to implement an actual prediction model, which makes EasyFino so easily extendable. So we already implemented various prediction models, for example, all the base methods, which we took from R as the R implementation is very efficient. So that's only available in the Docker workflow. We have blob, we have a CNN, elastic net, and so on and so forth. And we provide separate tutorials on how to adjust these existing um, prediction models, as well as a tutorial on how to create your own prediction model. For own prediction models, you can always use our templates here. And we also describe in our template here, which steps need to be done to create your own model. So that's our model sub package. We define base models. Based on that base model, we define sklearn, tensorflow and a torch model and based on that we define the actual prediction models. And now as our prediction models are defined, we run the optimization, we need to evaluate it in the end. Here we only have one function 
where we call our get evaluation report. So basically some very common evaluation metrics based on classification or also on regression. So now our whole optimization is done. Let's assume that. And we're now in our last package in the post process package. So in the post process package, we have several methods you might uh, want to use. We have here also run scripts and we have the actual functions. And that's done um, this way in order to serve both um, workflows that we have in EasyFino. So the Docker as well as the pip workflow. And you can find information on the model reuse, for example, in a separate tutorial. Um, you can also find information on the plot results and also on the summarized results in separate tutorials. So here in post process, we have several functions to summarize the results, to plot the results, which is all based on this results analysis. Also to reuse um, already optimized models and so on and so forth. So for example, if you want to integrate a further plot, then you just need to go here into our results analysis. And here we have a plot heat map results function. You could just write your own function that you want to use to plot your results. And if, for example, you want to use it in the Docker workflow, you can then just add a function here. Yeah? So we have this minus minus plot um, option already. And you can just create another elif um, part here to call your own prediction or your own plotting function. Yeah, and that's basically it. So we have these different sub packages here in our EasyFino package. Um, the things you might probably meet most is model and optimization. So if you want to integrate your own model, you will do a lot here in the model sub package. And if you want to see how the optimization is done using Optuna, you need these, this Optuna function here. If you want to understand the flow in the first place, I recommend to go here to this Optum pipeline function. Here we have a run function and this run function calls step by step all the functions which are called. Okay, great. So I hope that this really helps to better understand EasyFino structure which is especially relevant for people who want to contribute to it. So we are always happy for people who want to contribute, for example, by creating own models, um, creating further plot um, capabilities, and so on and so forth. So in case if you're interested to collaborate on EasyFino, feel free to contact us. Have fun with EasyFino and see you. Thank you.